right, welcome everybody. It worked. Praise God. Uh, the end time church, the most unpopular church you've ever seen. Yeah. And I, T Rex is at, well, I, I, I knew it. She'd end up in the first spot yeah. one day. I'm so proud of her. Yeah, it's, it's, it's promotion amazing. upon promotion, it seems. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, hello, Dr. Anderson. How are you, my friend? Oh, doing well. Yeah, great. I uh, hope you all are okay out there in um, wherever you are in the world. And that's the coolest part. You can be anywhere in the world. Maybe you're off world. I don't even know. Uh, tonight could be, I don't know, maybe it's for you then. It's a little weird uh, chapter there. We're going to study that a little bit later. We're going to take communion together. We're going to worship God together. Uh, we're going to come together as a family. Hello, Bri and Brian G. I wonder if that's the same Brian YouTube. Well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, hopefully God's in it, right? And our Even bond very own dear bond servant. Yes, indeed. Um, we love bond servant. She's everywhere. Ubiquitous. Is that a compliment? Probably not. Uh, anyways, yeah. we love her. And we love you for being where you are. If you would, please, first of all, get our app. It's totally free. Get it and use it for all it's worth. And um, tell somebody else about it. Tell somebody else about this right now. If you hit the share button, it'll go out to all your peeps. And uh, maybe you, didn't, you don't think you have a lot of peeps. But yet, it still can work. And so uh, please do so and tell somebody about what we do here. We've got so many activities and, and groups, especially in the app. We've got prayer going on all the time. We've got, and we're going to do that tonight, by the way. Get in your prayer requests now. <clears throat> What's the eyeballs for, bond servant? Sorry. Um, yeah. We're not going to do any jokes tonight, okay? No April Fool stuff. We're done with that. We're totally serious. You know, she got us already in the uh, signal group there with the... Uh... Yeah, bond servant, yeah. She uh, fulfilled her mama duties, I guess, and pulled one over on us. I've been got twice today <laughs> by two different people. And I know better, but I still fell for it. But I didn't say nothing until now, so nobody knows that I got got until now. You got. <laughs> I got got. Well, that's that's cool. Oh, she sees me. I get it. I get it. I get it. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I want you all to be totally comfortable in expressing yourselves. Please say hello. Please put in your prayer requests. Please say who you are, where you're from. Maybe this is your first time tuning in to what we do here at End Time Church. Yes, we've been fully online since 2018. Six years. Six years. That's a long time. We're about two months out from the anniversary, actually, I believe. <sighs> Getting there. Around yeah, that point. Something. Um, but yeah, it's been a while, guys. It's been a while. Before it was cool. Before is it, it, is it cool yet? I don't know. It was cool for like 2020. Yeah, that the COVID hit and they're like, oh my gosh, we gotta get our church online. Beat you. <laughs> because because the Lord said that he says, you gotta, you gotta do that. Um, get it, get it going, Chris and Jake. And so that's what we did. And that's why we're here. And, uh, we love y'all for tuning in and, uh, ex just telling us what's going on and hopefully becoming a member of end time church. Yes, you can yeah. become a member. Uh, yep. Uh, many of us are in the signal app. It's, it's a definitely a tool of communication that we use, uh, for sure. Um, yep, yeah, for sure. We got all kinds of apps out there. I mean, that some of us, I mean, there's some stuff you guys are on that, like, I don't even know what it is. It's and, for you, uh, it's for the mean, best. It's just we're all over the place, truthfully. <laughs> for the best, doctor. Yeah, yeah, need to know basis. You know what I mean? Yes, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's right. If I know too much, the brain explodes, and that's that. Too many passwords for me, like, for real. Uh, please, yes, I agree. It's yeah, it's a lot of passwords. Can't can't have that. Amen. Uh, anyway, guys, we are here for you, so please be ready to join us here in communion. What are we doing first, Doctor? Well, first, we're going to get some worship going. We're going to worship the Lord, and then uh, while we worship, you guys have an opportunity. Go ahead and put your prayer request in, uh, wherever, whatever media you're, you're tuning in from, whether on the app, whether on YouTube, whether on Facebook or Twitter, or I guess X. Yes. Um, you know? Go ahead and post that uh, prayer request. 
after worship, we're going to get into uh, communion, and then we're going to go right into the prayer uh, portion, and then uh, we're going to get right into the message tonight. Amen. And as you see, by the way, at the bottom of the screen, yes, if this ministry is a blessing to you, we are brought to you by your tithes and offerings. That's it. So you say, all right, God, what can I do about that? What would you have me to do, Father? And then he'll tell you, and then you do that. So go to endtime.church slash support and uh, give what he tells you in pretty much any way that you want. The types of um, you know mediums to, to give that is anywhere that you want to use. We can do that. Cryptocurrency so, too, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, we make it easy as possible. That's what we want to do. That's the intention of the app, of, of the giving, of this going all over the place, even though we've got our endtime.church, of course, which is awesome, and, and the app, but we, we broadcast it as wide as possible because the gospel, God's word is the most important thing uh, that we can tell somebody, so we want to get it out there as wide as we can. Anyway, that's why you guys should share it too, right? You know, and consider becoming a monthly partner with uh, End Time Church. You know, that's, that's an incredible way to help and to support this ministry as you partner with us monthly. It's going to help us continue to have the app and continue to put that out. The cost of the app is actually uh, fairly substantial, um, obviously a lot cheaper than a building, but uh, it's certainly fairly substantial. And uh, anything we get that we can count on on a monthly basis and we can begin to budget and plan uh, accordingly, that's very helpful. So we certainly encourage uh, monthly partnership with us as well and things that i'm sure that we'll be launching later on in the future that uh you know having some of that steady uh financial support you'll be sowing into that and those different projects and i believe that god would bless you for that amen including the we're you know folding in the um the house church home church initiative excuse me um so if you all you're in prayer about that maybe you're you do that already or maybe you're about to or you think you should please let us know please let dr anderson especially know because that's his baby but um we definitely want to help you okay we definitely think the lord's in that for sure so just keep that in mind as we go yep yeah we already have a network of people in five different countries 11 different states um, that that's already a part of this. And there's more people that are coming. And the intent here with the home church initiative is that we become a place where we can gather together in person to worship God, to fulfill, you know, some of the things that maybe we can't necessarily do uh, on a, on a digital platform that, you know, certainly get really close to, but having that in-person fellowship, uh, and changing your neighborhood, you know, one neighbor at a time is, uh, is certainly a really important part of what we're doing. So. Amen. All right. So pray about that and uh, be about it. Comment right now where you're watching this, what your prayer request happens to be, or whatever thoughts you have or questions or comments or what have you. Uh, but prayer time is coming up after our time of worship, which our awesome sister has provided once again. Um, off the top, man, I can't tell you if you don't, if you're not a musician, you really don't appreciate what, what a ad libbing original song, just how hard that is. I mean, to most of us, <laughs> to most of us, just to make something up and for it to be sound, have a have a structure, beginning, a middle, and end, and to have it in a certain time, all that, it's crazy to be able to do that, but Taryn does it all the time. And yes, she, yes, she is awesome. Amen. Anyways. Thank so, you. So, yep. We're, okay, so let's do that now, guys, if you're ready, and we'll come back and get communion going together so we can unite in the Holy Spirit. And we'll get to the uh, lesson after that, or the teaching, learning together. That's what we love to do. All right, guys. So let's do this together. Let's worship the Lord.
Amen. Thank you, Taryn, for the music tonight. I know it was a blessing to us, and we pray that it was a blessing to the Lord as well. Now, as we uh, make this transition, we're going to move into the communion portion of the worship service tonight, and then we're going to get into the prayer requests. So you got a few more moments here to put your prayer requests in. So before we get into the communion, I wanted to read from Isaiah chapter 53 uh, tonight to kind of prep our hearts and prep our minds for the receiving of the communion elements tonight. So I'm going to read Isaiah 53, and I'm just going to read a couple of verses throughout here. I'm going to start in verse 4. I'm going to read verse 4, 5, and 6, and then I'm going to read a few other verses. The prophet Isaiah said, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. And all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. Ladies and gentlemen, that speaks of us tonight, that we have all gone astray. We have all followed our own ways. We have all followed our own selfish, sinful paths in life. But yet God sent his son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, to come to this earth. He bore our grief. He carried our sorrows. Right? He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, but by his stripes we were healed. Verse 7 through 9, it says, And he was oppressed and he was afflicted, and yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth and he was taken from prison and from judgment and who will declare his generation for he was cut off from the land of the living for the transgressions of my people he was stricken and they had made his grave with the wicked but with the rich at his death because he had done no violence nor was there any deceit in his mouth and I read those scriptures tonight, and it's a clear picture, the suffering servant, Isaiah 53, of Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah. And I think about the institution of the Lord's Supper at that last Passover Seder that Jesus partook in. And Jesus, knowing what he was about to suffer and about to endure, you know, held the bread up and he broke it. And he says, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. And so tonight, let us take and eat of the body together. And as that last Passover Seder continued, the meal was served. And they enjoyed their meal together. And then the Seder continued, and Jesus got to the third cup, the third, the cup of redemption. And he held the cup up and he said, This is my blood shed for you. Do this each time you do of it in remembrance of me. And as we take of the, the cup, the cup of redemption, let us Take of the blood of Christ together in purity of heart and intention, knowing that his shed blood is for each and every one of us who have placed our hope and our trust and our faith in the risen Christ. Let's take together. Amen. So we're going to move now into the prayer portion. If anybody has any prayer requests, go ahead and put them in now. I do want to give a quick praise report. Our dear friend Susanna uh, in Ireland, she went in and there was a there was a, a potential that she had lung cancer. And I might be sharing too much here, but there is a potential for that. And we've been praying for her. And then she she went in and had the scans. The scans came back clear. There is no cancer. 
So as a church body tonight, I wanted to celebrate that as an answered prayer. You know, there are people that say that God doesn't answer prayers anymore, that God doesn't exist. But time and time and time again, we see that God answers prayers. When his people come together and they pray, God answers prayers. And this is yet another example of an answered prayer. And so we praise God for his miracle working powers. We praise God for his healing that we read in Isaiah 53 verse 5, that we are healed by the stripes of Jesus. We thank you for that, Lord. And so, Father, we just come boldly before the throne of grace today, God, with prayer and petition and just thanksgiving, starting off with thanksgiving. Thank you, God, for healing Susie. I pray, God, that there would be continued restoration in her body. And whatever the issue that, that had been going on, that it's completely gone. I thank you, Lord, for that. Lord, we want to lift up uh, bond servant's friend, Jody. Something went wrong with the surgery. You know what's going on with that, Lord. And so I just ask God that right now in the name of Jesus that you would give guidance and wisdom to the doctors uh, as she continues to deal with whatever the consequences are of what happened, that you would give wisdom. Uh, I pray, God, that uh, you begin to, to take care of all that pain. That pain would begin to leave her body. And then that worry that's on her mind, God, that would begin to, to ease Lord, she is a follower of yours, Jesus, and I just pray, God, that she would be comforted in the fact that she is your follower, and that no matter what happens, it's all going to be okay, that no matter what happens, all is well. And so we ask now that your divine wisdom be granted to these doctors in these times, that you would give them that grace, Lord. And Lord, we just want to also lift up um, Sister Kim, Lord, that you continue to make her and all of us more like you, God, that as we continue to grow in the sanctification process, Lord, that more and more we would yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit's guidance and the Holy Spirit's leading. And that the moments when we need to stop and evaluate and analyze our hearts, God, that we would be willing to do it truthfully and honestly. Lord, I pray for Michael's salvation. Uh, and I just come against this this alcoholism that's got him bound and addicted. Lord, we just come against that in Jesus' name. Lord, I just ask right now, Holy Spirit, that every drop of alcohol that he puts on his tongue would be a repulsing taste of vomit in his mouth and that he would want nothing to do with it. I pray that that taste of alcohol would be a complete and utter repulsive thing to Michael beginning right now in Jesus' name. That every bit that he that he tries to tr drink, no matter what it is, no matter what the, the drink is, that if he tries to drink it, God, that it would taste like vomit in his mouth and he would spit it out. And I pray and ask you right now in the mighty name of Jesus that that would be accomplished in his life. And that he would run to you for salvation. We lift up uh, Kyler, um, that Kyler would come back to you, the good shepherd. God, that you would bring people in Kyler's path that would encourage her. You know, she, Kyler doesn't always receive, and many of us don't always receive um, the wisdom of people that we're close to. Sometimes it takes somebody that's different, a stranger, to get through. So I pray in this situation, whatever it takes, that Kyler would hear you speaking and would come to you. Return to you, the good shepherd. Pray for protection for Andrea and the boys. And that Trevor and Kirsten would receive a home and a car. But you remove in those situations, God. We thank you for that. And Lord, we got the storms that are coming. Lord, there's here in Ohio specifically, it's supposed to be a very, very, very rough day tomorrow uh, with tornadoes and hail and flooding. And all the wonderful things that come with spring, Lord. But uh, I know in Ohio, God, they're talking about how the combination of things and the severity of things and the totality of the severity in the entire state of Ohio hasn't happened in many decades. This is going to be a certainly a storm that uh, could be record-breaking in 
many different tragic ways, God. So I just pray, God, that you would, Lord, help those that are going to be impacted by this. Um, understand, have them with with. Help them with, with answering the question of why. Because I know that question to be asked a lot. Lord, I just want to lift up uh, bond servant's neighbor, Michael, who has been feeling a bit better, but the legs and feet are in pain. I just ask God that you're, again, to give doctors the wisdom um, to find out what's wrong. Lord, a lot of times it's trial and error uh, on the parts of doctors uh, while they're trying to find what a problem is so they can begin to effectively treat it. So, God, I pray, God, that um, you would help them identify what it is. Obviously, they're ruling out what it's not, so I just pray that they would have the wisdom to see what it could be. Amen. I just want to pray again, Lord, for Kyler's health, um, for the upcoming tests and blood work, and for Kyler's back. Lord, you you know the situation. You know what's going on. Whatever the problem is in the back, Lord, if there's slipped discs, we just ask that you would begin to align those back in place. If it is anything with pain, um, we just ask, God, that you would begin to take that pain right away in Jesus' name. Whatever the blood condition that's going to get blood work, whatever they're trying to see, as a result of the blood work, God, that, uh, Lord, that it would be come back clean, it would come back clear, and it would come back normal. In Jesus' name. And now, Lord, we just lift up Pastor Manti as he gets ready to come on and bring the word tonight. I pray, God, that his words would be your words, God, that you would put your words in his mouth and that he would speak it and that we would be receptive to the word tonight, that we would be hearers and doers of the word. We to thank you, God, for the word accomplishing the thing for which you've sent it. We praise you, God, for who you are. You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the maker of heaven and earth. We bless you, King of the universe. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. All right, guys. Good evening to you, or good morning, uh, depending on where you are. My brother Mo Cool is checking in. Other side of the planet, uh, where the sun has risen already. So bless the Lord for him and all y'all. So the bachelors got uh, T-Rexes saying hello tonight to everybody. Say hello to her, please. Obviously, we saw uh, Kim and Brian and others. Uh, thanks for participating in prayer. It's one of the awesome things that we can do together as an online church. Yes, we can pray all the time, and uh, we welcome it. So. If you were with us um, last week, you saw the a couple of verses, at least, of the book of Ezekiel, chapter 1, one of the most different, for sure, uh, books in the scriptures, uh, one of my favorites. Like I told you last week, I have you know got interviewed uh, for a job once and referenced this uh ezekiel book is one of my favorites and i gotta under the the rule of thumb is god does not waste paper um he tells us things for reasons he's not trying to confuse us he's not trying to mess you up he wants you to read understand believe and with the Holy Spirit's interpretation that everyone who's born again can have, does have, um, that we can understand and divide rightly this word of truth. What is the truth? Your word is truth. And so if anyone new is watching tonight, I welcome you. And um, obviously, um, well, not obviously, if you didn't know... Um, this, the first part of Ezekiel, um, definitely the first chapter for sure. And really the first 10 or so, um, are cited by non-believers all the time. Did you know that? 
Um, it's because of the high strangeness, the very uh, odd or fantastical, whatever you want to say, description of how Ezekiel encounters God and how he shows up. So um, for, for whatever reason, that really speaks to, to, to a lot of people, even if they don't accept the Bible at all, uh, or certainly don't get around to repenting and following Jesus um, as a servant, which we all should do. He's the only way to salvation, right? The only way to live forever. The only way to be in the kingdom of God and to be forgiven. Amen. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, with that in mind, though, let's see why it's so popular with folks who really don't care to be a Christian. Um and those of us who do know what it says to maybe look at it in a fresh new way that would be pretty great okay ezekiel uh we're in the middle of chapter 1 let's go to where we left off we saw what uh, ezekiel means uh basically what he is about the fact that I think there's some books in the Bible. Obviously, they're all important, but in my view, this is one of the ones that we really, really, really got to know in these days that we're in. Um, and so it's worth our time. And then we did a little background of um, Ezekiel and who he was and how he wrote the book and stuff. Mm. Okay. I think we got to... Uh, what do we get here? Like four, five, seven verses. Um. Okay, so we've got <clears throat> God showing up, and it's not just God. Uh, he's got company. He's got company. All right, so let's focus in here real quick on the text. Okay, I've got your new King James version here. You. You use whatever one you want. Whatever your little heart desires, no problem. In fact, if you have a different one and you have a, a there's a word choice or whatever in there that's different than what we're reading, just type it in the chat there. Um, okay, so we've got a a a storm, a whirlwind, like Chris Anderson was just saying. Um, maybe a bad storm's coming for, you know, his neck of the woods. Um, tomorrow or soon this is the type of the, this is the language at least that ezekiel um, uses to say this is how god showed up this is how he entered my my vision it was like a big storm a right a great cloud raging fire engulfing itself brightness was all around and radiating out of its midst like a color of amber out of the midst of the fire and then came four living creatures and we had four faces, remember, on each of them. And I remember I gave you homework, those of you who were here and uh, who were paying attention, and some of you actually did it. I want to I want to uh, give a shout-out to our own Kim here, who's uh, again tonight engaged, and T-Rex. They both did actually very excellent um, word studies, basically. Um, of these four faces, of these creatures, these cherub, um, that that are described here in Ezekiel one, and um, because the question came up, why are these, why do they have these faces? Four faces. One was a lion. Uh, one was a man. One was an ox and an eagle. Like, what's up with that? Well, clearly, uh, at least it means not regular people, right? They're not human. <clears throat> uh, I think it's pretty safe to say they represent things. You can certainly represent scriptural things or truth, um, even the four Gospels or whatever. <clears throat> All that can be correct, but they're still real things. Okay? Th there's nothing in this vision or this experience that Ezekiel has um, to say that these are not real. They're, it's not a parable. 
understand, right? The parable is something like this. It kind of looked like that. It's sort of like, it isn't literally true. It's just a story to represent something else. This is not that. Ezekiel is just describing what he's looking at. Okay. Uh, I think we got to verse 12-ish. All right, so let's pick it up there. We're talking about these four creatures, and they had wings, and they were attached to each other at the wings when they had two other ones, and two were pointing up uh, or touching each other upwards, and then two covered their bodies. And each one went straight forward. How is that possible? Okay, so we have a we have a again, try to catch the image here. Let me um all right, that's the that's the cover of you know your um thumbnail or whatever for the video tonight. Um that's basically it. Now it's tough to get an accurate drawing uh from what ezekiel saw because it's just so weird and um it's tough for an artist to render all the details that are in it because <clears throat> it's incredibly detailed okay so if you look here on the picture that ezekiel is supposed to be on the bottom um left there so he's got his hand in front of his face oh my gosh what is that and you've got these, lack of a better term, an angel thing, right? This is the cherubim, okay? That you could even, if you look closely, there are little, there's four faces on there. And there's the four wings, and two are going up, and two are supposed to be attached to each other. But there's like this lightning and electricity and fire going all over the place. And then there's these wheels, which we're going to get to tonight. Um, but they're all basically underneath or around um, <clears throat> this, this platform or structure that has something on the top okay so that's what we're talking about when we're describing these things so this says they each went wherever the spirit wanted them to go they each went straight forward wherever the spirit wanted them to go and they did not turn when they went as for the likeness of the living creatures their appearance in other words like i described their faces um but just so, you know, they didn't look like a human because their appearance was like burning coals of fire. Like the appearance of torches going back and forth. Among the living creatures. This is weird. I mean, this is just a weird sentence. Uh, it is not an everyday sight ran back and forth in appearance like a flash of lightning. So they look like a burning coal, a flash of lightning, and torches. Well, uh, those things are kind of in the same vein. I don't think Ezekiel's, maybe he's just reaching for the right words there. A burning coal, you know, you've you ever made a charcoal barbecue, you know? Uh, when the coal is hot, it's, you know, it's fire is actually from the inside, basically, you know? Pretty cool to see. It's just a glowing red thing. Um, and a, but a torch that, uh, going back and forth, a torch that's moving. <sighs> I mean, I guess some outdoorsy people um, might have experience with that, but I guess so. I'm just thinking like when you when you sway a torch back and forth, the fire it actually like leaves a like a trail, right? Right, like you're moving it, and some of the fire kind of just sticks behind, and you have it looks like a long, elongated thing, right? I'm just wondering why he said, described it that way. Not just a torch, but a torch going back and forth. Um, 
um, a, a torches going back and forth among the so something is like no 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 seems like burning gold torches lightning a flash of lightning right we know what a flash of lightning is it's fast intense bright and apparently fast super fast oh wait this is non-stop it's it's going around these creatures whatever they are non-stop and everyone went straight forward mm -mm 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 -mm. left right back forward. i don't know i think i have a note on that here yeah <clears throat> okay so we just basically read 11 to 14 um the text says the spirit wherever they went the spirit uh wherever they the spirit wanted them to go that's where they went and they did not turn when they went like okay we're making a left everyone go this turn left and then go okay everyone go all right now we're ready now i'll go this way it just my picture in my mind is like this zigzag up and down back and forth or left and right forward and backward <clears throat> lightning shooting everywhere uh, um you know some kind of uh like an electron that's what i'm thinking about right an electron shooting around the atom <clears throat> okay um just something to point out about the terms um Again, some translations might say the wind, the wind and spirit in this is the same word, ruach. Okay, most most often it's spirit. That's the word for the Holy Spirit, honestly. Um, any spirit, really. But if we're talking about this contraption or these creatures and this thing, um, definitely must, I think, be the Holy Spirit or whatever spirit is in them. It's part of their makeup, you know, what they are. <clears throat> um, they don't actually have to move. The, they just think it or the spirit tells them and they go that way. Um, and again, burning fires or torches, the burning fires, a lot like Acts chapter two, when the Holy Spirit arrives, remember that they're, they're in the upper room, the original disciples <clears throat> and the uh, Holy Spirit arrives as tongues. It says as tongues of fire and, you know, sat on them um, or came to them that way. So there's that. That's pretty neat. Um, and also it's again referred to as torches. A torch is a is a is a stick with a fire on it. That's another way of saying candlestick. Um or like the seven churches in Revelation. Again, in the fire of the Holy Spirit, <coughs> excuse me, um is has to be there for there to be a church, for it to be a lamp stand or a candlestick or a torch. Uh, even the term for living creatures is just like in Revelation chapter 4. And the description is just also like Isaiah chapter 6, uh, where we have a similar situation, but they're not called cherubim there. They're called seraphim. Seraphim. Seraphim is uh, burning ones, like they're on fire. So Isaiah might have, I don't know if God told them to call on that, or they, you know, Isaiah just came up with that name. Um, so they probably are the same creatures. And I made a note here, instantaneous movement like lightning, instantaneous from one point to another, right? Boom, 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 boom. And also we're going to see here, the wheels didn't have to turn to change directions. It's not even them. They didn't have to look a certain way to go a certain way. There's this actual, these contraptions um that don't move and we're going to get to that in a second but i got a question here i think we should um address mokul says what's the difference between cherubim and seraphim um i only know i mean you have only basically the one description again seraph is um burning or on fire um and cherub it means to grasp or cla clasp or to protect like that's the the imagery is to you're holding on to something you're you're surrounding it you're protecting it that's why satan is called the cherub or 
at least his old job, the cherub that covers. So that's the difference between the words. I truly don't know, Mokul, if there is a difference in, like, if they're different creatures, if they're different non-human intelligences. Um, they might not be. They might be the same things. Okay. Um, okay, so let's go on with, uh, where are we? The wheels. 15. We're going to get through this chapter, friends. Boy, I hope, I hope tonight. And now I looked at the living creatures. Behold, a wheel was on the earth. On the earth, besides each living creature with its four faces. So we've got the, the creature, the creation, the thing, non-human thing, um, itself. And then you have this device or whatever this is. A wheel, it's called, was on the earth beside each living creature. The appearance of the wheels and their workings, their inner workings, okay, their innards, how they moved or how they worked. Now, this is where all the interesting people who have never, couldn't care less about God uh, or serving Jesus are hooked into this stuff right here. So don't forget that, okay, if you're a believer. Let's learn something from that fascination. And, you know, make a bridge there. Um, the appearance of the wheels and their workings was like the color of barrel. And New King James, barrel. And all four had the same likeness. All the wheels looked the same. At each creature's, the, it doesn't say the four corners. It could be a circle, a circular pattern, um, or it could be a square. But it seems like they're equidistant, so they they all look the same. The appearance of their work workings was, as it were, a wheel in the middle of a wheel, and when they moved they went toward any one of the four directions. They did not turn aside when they went. If you're thinking of a, a wheel on a car, right? Yeah, like a tire, right? The wheel is kind of flat or narrow and you're facing this way. And then when you turn your steering wheel, you're actually, right? The wheel actually turns in the direction where you want the car to go. Um, these didn't do that. They always stayed the same, no matter what direction. Good questions. I like this. Uh, we'll get to them in just a minute. Okay, thank you guys. Hey, Nancy, pleasure to meet you, I believe. Um, yeah, okay, so we've got these things, and they don't turn. They're just going. It's very, it's very similar statement to the cherub themselves, right? They don't have to turn when they move. They just go that direction. A wheel in the middle of a wheel. When they moved, there went one, any one of the four directions. They did not turn aside when they went. As for their rims or their outside, they were so high that they were awesome. That means they were really tall. I'm not sure exactly. And their rims were full of eyes. Oh boy. Now we're now this is freaky. Uh the rims were full of eyes all around the four of them. So each of the wheel things, contraptions, uh, have eyes all around them. When the living creatures went, the wheels went beside them. And when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels lifted up. Wait a minute, this thing is flying. And it's landing, and then it's lifting up again. What does it sound like to you? Wherever the spirit wanted to go, they went. And by the way, we should, yes, we can apply this to, the, to your life as a Holy Spirit-filled believer 
a follower of Jesus, the Messiah. The Holy Spirit should be in you. And when, when it wanted to go, when it wants to go, you should go. When the Holy Spirit says go, you go. Yeah, that's cool. Like we can do that. Um, but here's the point. Uh, they're being directed or whatever by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit? God's Spirit? Probably. Or is it saying something about how they work? Like, it's... Um, not like a normal mode of transportation. Like, you would have to steer a boat, or the car, or the wagon, right? You'd have a driver, and they would actually have to do something to actually steer the thing. This is not like that. Apparently, you just the spirit, there's thought or something, and then it happens. And the wheels were lifted together with them, for the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. Um, the word literally there is living creature singular. The Septuagint, which is the Greek version of this book, and the Vulgate, which is the Latin version, came obviously after... Um, well, after the Hebrew versions, um, but that those versions actually, instead of living creature, that says spirit of life. For the spirit of life was in the wheels, which is neat. Okay. Uh, when no, verse 21 now, we're up to, when those went, these went. Where the wheels went, the creatures went, right? When these stood, those stood. And when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels lifted up together with them, for the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. There it is again. Let's pause there for a second, because now we're we're wheeled out. Um, okay. So, wheels within wheels. The, that term um, probably, almost certainly, does not mean co concentric circles, right? A concentric... A concentric circle is, you know what that means? It's like, mm, I don't have anything to demonstrate. Mm, nothing good at all. Sorry, no virtual lesson today. I mean, uh, examples. Uh, you got the circle and then another circle inside the circle. That's concentric. Right, it's not talking about that. It's just a wheel with another a circle with another circle inside it, just a smaller one. It's probably not that because of the way they're described. I think it's ninety degree angles or right angles. Okay, um, and I think I showed this to you last week, and I'll show you again in a second. When it says rims were high and awesome, literally that verse or that phrase is, and fear belonged to them. When it says high and awesome, the rims were high and awesome, it means their fear belonged to them. That means that's quite different, okay? Um, than high and awesome. Awesome meaning full of awe, awe inspiring, um, the fear of the Lord type of stuff. Fear belonged to them. They made you fear. They're fearsome. They were scary to look at. Like awesome in that way. Like I say awesome all the time. Everything's awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, this is different, okay? Fear belonged to them. They were, you can inspire fear just by looking at them. Well, maybe because they were full of eyeballs, but uh, they were really something to behold. It was something to behold. Wow, right? Wow. I'm even a little scared right now. That's how that's what, how different these things are. Um, and when it says full of eyes all around, you gotta think that what is, how why would that be? Number one. <sighs> I see I see the T-Rex making Lego movie jokes. All right, I just gotta put this up here. If anyone saw Lego movie, classic. One of the funniest movies ever. Everything is awesome is a Great song from that one. Anyways, um, full of eyes all around. They can see everything in all directions at all times. Why else would you have eyes all around it? 
around a circle. That means there's nothing they couldn't see. You can't sneak up on them. <laughs> uh, uh, the the idea doesn't say this, but the idea is they can see through anything. Like that, you can't hide from these things. Um, and also, frankly, it's gross. Okay, it's gr grotesque a little bit. Sorry, God. Um, it's it's a little grotesque to imagine this thing. First of all, it's supposed to be an inanimate object. What are they doing with eyes? Well, duh, dummy. Maybe they're not inanimate objects. Maybe some some kind of way they're alive. I don't know. Some kind of life. I don't know. But they have eyeballs. Uh, so they can see everything, but yeah, they're fearsome, right? Fear belongs to them. The grotesque with all these eyes, decidedly not human for sure. Can we agree on that? Okay. Not human and not any kind of vehicle that humans use. Can we agree on that? <sighs> Okay. Um, it does, uh, Bond Servant says, it reminds me of God's omniscience, right? They have eyeballs all around. Um, Zechariah 4 verse 10 also has a similar kind of situation where there's seven eyes, right? And the eyes of the Lord go throughout the whole earth. That's omniscience of God. Uh, that's the note that I have for that verse as well, Bond Servant. Okay. So it may it may just relate that, but again, I don't see anything in here so far that um, is a parable or a spiritual explanation. You know what I mean? This is what they look like. <sighs> Weird, right? Okay, now to me the most well, I don't know about the most interesting, but super cool, and we should get on with this already. Uh, verse 22. Right? Yeah. The, the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. Verse 22. The likeness of the firmament above the heads of the living creatures was like a color of awesome on awesome crystal stretched out over their heads. Oh, that's where I'll bring you back to this image. See the big square thing over the circles? Uh, you could say, uh, it, what does it call it? A, uh, uh, um, a firmament of awesome crystal. Well, that sounds a lot like a sea of glass. So this was over their head, but a sea of glass comes up from... Revelation 4, verse 6, and Revelation 21, 11, um, which is what God's throne was on. And like the Apostle John was on top of this. Now, careful with your brain now. Watch out. John was on top of this um, firmament, the uh, expanse thing, but Ezekiel was below it. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's very interesting. Um, and under the firmament, their wings spread out straight one toward another. Again, that's this. Kind of that. Actually, let me show you another picture. Oh, it's right here. I could have just went one more. That's an alternate uh, exposition. And this wheel within wheel thing, this is a lot more... Actually, it's kind of written like drew drew on like that here too. See how they're at right angles. But I like the I like this. That kind of that kind of I think nails it. So they're they're rotating around each other and within each other, right? Different angles, and you would get a a lot of electricity and stuff bouncing around, lightning, torches, all this stuff. Anyway, you see those blue guys there. That's when it shows their wings were like touching each other. That's what it. That's what it's saying. 
uh, spread out straight one toward another. Each one had two which covered one side, and each one had two which covered the other side of the body. Where When they went, I heard the noise of their wings, like the noise of many waters, like the voice of the Almighty. A tumult, like the noise of an army. And when they stood still, they let down their wings. The ones that were touching each other above, uh, below this firmament thing. Okay, so they let their wings down. And a voice came from above the firmament that was over their heads. And whenever they stood, they let down their wings. That phrase, above the firmament or below the firmament, again, Jake's, we talked last week about Genesis 3 um, being invoked by the cherub with the flaming sword, remember? Uh, it was left to guard the garden with a spinny fiery circular bright defense mechanism that's genesis 3 but you also get that those chapters sprung right back on you here because remember the earth when the creation the six days of creation and the firmament was placed over this you know and under the firmament and this and that and it was separating the sky from the outer space basically Interesting. And above the firmament, over their heads, was the likeness of a throne. So we have these things underneath, these creatures, and these wheels doing their wheels. are They're like landing gear or something, right? They land on them. They take off. They're spinning around. They There's lightning. There's life in there. They're terrible and fearsome. There's eyeballs. And then they're they're under this big crystal um, or glassy platform, um, ferment, uh, platform, whatever. And then on top of that platform is a throne. In appearance like sapphire stone. And on the likeness of the throne, you see how he doesn't actually say a throne. It, says it looks like one. It's, it's shaped like it. It's kind of like one, but it's not. Or it's different. Um, on the likeness of the throne was the likeness of an appearance of a man high above it. High above the throne. High and lifted up. That's Isaiah, right? And also from the appearance of his waist and upward, I saw as it were the color of amber with the appearance of fire all around within it. And from the appearance of his waist downward, I saw as it were the appearance of fire with brightness all around. Wow, this guy's fiery and bright and brilliant and sounds like somebody else we should know. Like the appearance, well, let's just say it. In Revelation 1, Jesus, the glorified, resurrected Jesus Christ, is described in very similar ways. And even where it says appearance of a man high above it, I think the man, Christ Jesus. Okay, because it's a man at the, bo at the bottom line of of this crazy contraption and whatever this transportation system is, um, very unhuman creatures are involved, very unhuman wheels, uh, machinery, uh, whatever you want to call it, alive or whatever. None of this is human. None of this is normal, except for the man on the throne. Even though he looks different, he's bright for sure. Looks like he's on fire, uh, but he's described as a man. That's important because we are made in the image of God and likeness of God. That means we look like God looks. Like in the final verse, we've made it, my friends. Like the appearance of a rainbow in a cloud on a rainy day. So is the appearance of the brightness all around it. This is the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. When I saw it, I fell on my face and heard a voice of one speaking. All right, so this whole chapter is now complete. We are seeing all Ezekiel is describing is what the heck just arrived from this storm cloud thing 
whirlwind tornado <laughs> uh, from the, the north of Turkey. Okay, that's it came from maybe from Eden itself. And it's spinning and it's wheels and it's creatures and it's descending and it's ascending and it's going all different directions and it's carrying somebody. And here again, I tried to show you these did not show up well. Um, let me try to pull it up today. Maybe. And share this. Sorry for the watermark there. Okay, but that's that's the wheel in a wheel imagery. It's like a gyroscope. That's what we would call that. That's what I think Ezekiel saw. All right, which is pretty rad. Um, and let's see one other example that I can't find. Oh yeah, here it is. And it's really not big enough to show you. Well, it's not going to work out. Anyway, it's this brown thing. <laughs> it's a it's a GIF uh, image kind of just spinning around and there's a light inside. I'm sorry that didn't work out. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So let's do a couple of notes here on what we just read and then go on to the conclusion. Uh, platform, again, or expanse or firmament, sea of glass, language. Um, uh, my thought, again, on this is fire plus sand equals glass. If you have a lot of fire around, which you did on everything, on the, the wheels, on the creatures, on the throne, even on the man on the throne, everything's fiery. If you put fire onto a sandy surface, for example, you get glass, I'm just saying. Um, above the ferment, calling Genesis 1 to 3 back to mind, like we said. And the last verses look a lot like the glorified Jesus. And when it says the brightness, the glory of Jehovah, the glory of Yahovah, the Lord, that's the word of Shekinah. Shekinah. Um, it's only, only God can have that. And it's only when he makes his appearance before man that uh, it's described. And so it's going to come back in chapters 9 and 10 when we get there for sure but that it's telling you who it is it's not an alien okay it's not a space brother it's yahovah the lord himself jesus the messiah okay that's him now the possibly uncomfortable part of this is whoops does jesus need transportation that's crazy. Why would he need this? He can just show up, right? Well, we've got a ton of scripture to say Jesus takes transportation all the time. To the point of you want you don't say nothing is impossible for God because we know nothing only that he can't lie. But every time he's going somewhere or coming to visit or something. If, if it's between heaven and earth, there's always some kind of vehicle involved. Acts chapter 1, he was taken up into a cloud while they were watching, and they could no longer see him. Jesus has been taken from you into heaven, but someday he will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go. So not only is this, whatever this was, this is into a cloud. You know you can't actually go anywhere in a cloud, right? This is water vapor. Anyways, it's something, and Jesus used that to go to heaven. And it, the angel said he's going to come back, and he's going to arrive the same way in this vehicle. Whatever it is, the same way you saw him go in the cloud, he's coming back. How do we know that? Psalm 104, for example, you make the clouds your chariot. What do you do in a chariot? You ride it. You go in it. You ride upon the wings of the wind. Isaiah 19, behold, Jehovah rides on a swift cloud.
Fact, right? Hashtag facts. Okay, there's no debate. Yes, Jesus uses a vehicle, the heaven and earth thing, whether it's needed or not, he uses it. There before me was one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven, Daniel 7. Obviously, the return of Jesus is seen there. Jesus himself says when, when he comes back, they will see the Son of Man. Come, and by the way, he's always talking about, right, the Son of Man, the Son of Man. He looks like a man on the throne, right? This is important. And they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. That's Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. Revelation 1, look, he comes with the clouds of heaven, and everyone will see him. Now, this isn't talking about Jesus or the, the Lord, but look at Exodus 19 and 2 Kings 2. Exodus 19, we should remember the, the Mount Sinai. So what happened on the third day when it was morning that there was thunder and lightning and flashes of a thick cloud. Okay, so we have thunder, lightning. We saw that. It's a thick cloud upon the mountain, Sinai, and a very loud trumpet sound so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. So here, in other words, God has arrived. Okay, God is arriving on Mount Sinai in something. And then 2 Kings chapter 2, which is very famous, Elijah leaving the world and going to heaven. If you, if here's the thing, listen to this careful. If you, this is Elijah talking to Elisha, right? The one who's going to take over for him because he's going to the Lord now and you're going to take over my position as the head prophet or whatever. If you, if you see me when I am taken from you, then you will get your request. He wants to have miraculous abilities. You'll get your request if you see me when I'm taken from you. But if not, then you won't. <laughs> and as they were walking along and talking, suddenly a chariot of fire appeared, drawn by horses of fire, and it drove between the two men, separating them. What was that? And Elijah was carried by a whirlwind into heaven. Not carried by the chariot. Apparently, so like a whirlwind, just like what, where, what Ezekiel just saw. So he got in a vehicle, and the vehicle took him to heaven that way. Okay, so it happened, okay, that there was some kind of device, some kind of something that had to take Elijah that way. He couldn't just die like a normal person. He had to get into this thing to go to heaven. Maybe that's what you need if you don't die. Or if you're Jesus, after you rose from the dead, you're... You're alive again. It's not the normal way to get to heaven. You got to have a ride. Um, but look at that first part. If you see it, so that means it can happen without you seeing it. So there's some kind of property, some kind of something that this thing might happen and you'll never notice. There's something about it where. God has to let you see it. I don't know, man. It's fun to think about. Okay, so finally. And this is a serious question. I'm not trying to joke around. It's not April Fool's joke. This is for real. Could you call what you just saw in Ezekiel and the book of Acts and Isaiah and Daniel and the Gospels and Kings and Exodus, could you call this transportation a UFO? or a UAP. Yes, you could. It's unidentified, and it's flying in the air, and it's an object, or if it's unidentified, it's anomalous. Like, I can't explain that. It's a phenomenon. It's, maybe you see it, maybe you don't. Oh, what is, it's these creatures, there's lightning, there's spirit moving them around. Yeah, that's a UAP. If Jesus uses it, and he does, and he did, and he will. If look, uh, Ezekiel, Jesus used it to show up, and the book of Acts after the resurrection, he used it to go to heaven. And in the second coming, when he returns, he's going to use it again. So, if it's good enough for Jesus, right? If Jesus uses it. Does everyone else need to use one if they go between earth and heaven? And what I mean by that is not necessarily even the earth and in the sky, but 
to the unseen realm. The seen and the unseen. We know that, right? Can you see the devil right now? Can you see God? Can you see angels? Can you see? No, because they're in another realm. They're in another dimension or whatever you want to call it. Like Elijah and Elisha, if you are able to see this, if God let you see, God lets you see it, right? Because it's normally not seen. But we know there's angels everywhere. Where there's demons, you can't see demons. Then they're not. They, there's no demons in the sky flying around. I'm just saying, <clears throat> right? Now we know Jesus can do whatever He wants. He's God. God can do what He wants. He doesn't need to do this. But if He does it. Angels don't do whatever they want, right? They're under rules and regulations, or they're limited, and they're created beings, and they're maybe they do need it. Between the earth and the heaven, between the seen and the unseen, between the second heaven and the third heaven, what's that about? Most of you know, you've been, you're smart, you've been with End Time Church for a while, you know exactly what that means. You know, Daniel chapter 10 kind of stuff, mid-heaven versus where God is in the third heaven, like Paul said. Are angels, whether good or evil, the only things with access to those places, to those dimensions? The second heaven, for example. That's Yes, it's an unseen realm, but it's not where God is. It's an in-between place between man, you know, where we are in the in, on the earth, and where God is, there's this middle ground that you can't see, but there's battles happening there. That's why Daniel 10 is so important to understand this. This is why Ephesians 6, this is what it's talking about, that the enemy is in between these areas. And that's why your prayers may be delayed. That's why maybe there's you're feeling pressure or this or that, or uh, when you're, you know, when you're trying to gauge in spiritual things and it's not working out or you're opposed by this or that. That's, you know, very likely that's what we're talking about. So I just, anyway, I just want you to concentrate or, you know, meditate on this stuff, pray about it. Okay. Just, I mean, really take a minute, take a week, take longer. Um, because, and that's the end of chapter one, because um, we are in a moment. We are in a moment in history where if you've been listening to the other things that I've been, you know, doing the last couple of months, I really think God is, God is doing something here and he's opening our eyes to those who will see um, about this. Something is happening. There's a phenomenon happening. There are things in the skies. There are things in the, Oceans. There are things that we can't see in the end, and yet we do, and then now we can't see them again. So there's something biblical going on, and it would be a major error to assume that we know what it is, or to assume that, oh yeah, this is it's all phony or made up, or it's all demonic. Or it's all benevolent space brothers or whatever, right? I'm just saying this thing is part of where we are in this age. And if God uses it and if God sees fit to put it in the Bible to say he does this and Jesus is going to use it when he comes back, who, who knows? You know, we're talking about other non-human intelligence. That's a big thing now, right? Our government uses that term all the time in America. Anyway, non-human intelligence. You just saw a bunch of non-human intelligences in the Bible. You just saw it tonight. So don't tell me they don't exist. Don't tell me it's a crazy thought. We know they're facts. It's a true. It's true. So what are we dealing with? What is coming? What are we going to have to be prepared for as the church? There's a great deception, yes, and that comes from every direction, starting with your own, our own pride, self-delusion, self-deception, idolatry. (sighs) 
Okay, let's take a minute or two, or not too much longer, to because there's a bunch of stuff going on in the chat. So I I love you for doing this. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Let's see what we got after I started yapping. Um, I did the cherubim and seraphim thing, right? Um, Bonser, don't recall offhand, did Enoch ever describe this type of thing? Mm, in the you mean the book well, certainly not in where he's mentioned in Genesis. Do you mean the book of Enoch? Uh, well, I don't recall vehicular talk. Um uh, clearly there's a bunch of creatures named and you know things that they did and and different there's Nancy. Hello, Nancy. Welcome. I think the seraphim are on the arm of the covenant, the Ark of the Covenant. One on each side. Yeah, that's how that's right. Um, but there that's that's a that's called cherub. They're protecting the mercy seat or covering it. So I think those terms are interchangeable. Uh I remember reading von Denkenen's book about this pretty interesting from a secular view. I don't I don't know if I'm familiar with that. Von Servant. Ah, uh, Sarah, Doctor Sarah, Professor Sarah says it seems like, or it seems that he is only seeing the craft from the outside, or not only seeing from the outside, but also from the inside. Um, I'd like to hear more about that. I just want to mention one thing before I go because it popped in my brain a couple of times. And if you don't know what I mean, just forget it. If you don't know what this is in referring to, a couple of months ago, it's out there now, uh, but a man named Ryan Graves gave testimony before the United States Congress under oath, uh, and he's put it out there many times. He's got a podcast now and, and stuff. Um, he runs an organization now called Americans for Safe Aerospace because he was a pilot, and he and his crew – <clears throat> experienced weird stuff around their jets, um, including one that is very, he describes it very particularly. And boy, does it remind me of what we just read. He says they encountered a black or gray cube in a sphere, a translucent sphere, and then other people have seen other orbs or things around it. Um, okay. I d I, you know what I'm saying? Don't disbelieve that. So anyway, it's seeing it from the inside. I never, I don't know if I ever thought of that. Uh, Revelation before I believe it speaks the seven spirits of God. Right, that's right. <clears throat> is it possible the seven spirits are part of this craft? That's a very good point, right? Because the spirit says, go here, the spirit, but then it says seven spirits. Yes, we know that relates to the seven churches, but there's seven eyes in uh, Zechariah, like we said earlier, and that has to do with God seeing all over the earth. And maybe that, boy, that, that may speak to other things. Why do you need more than one set of eyes to see the earth? Maybe there's seven layers of this world. I don't know, man. Uh, Philip, he was transported. Philip, did, I'm sorry, I must have, uh, I need context for that. Obviously, yes, Philip was instantaneously zapped, uh, transported one time for sure, right? After he baptized that dude, boom, he's out. He's in another city all of a sudden. Uh, Kim says, are they holding up God's throne? That's what it sounds like. That's probably what it's saying. Or there at least is a, a structure, and they're flying along with it. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Maybe they're actually doing the flying. Maybe they're actually providing the, the energy or the transportation itself to get the throne from point A to point B. Because it says those wheels actually touch the ground. And then lift up, right? So 
Perhaps. It's a, maybe that's exactly what it's saying. Uh, God's throne in Revelation is a huge green rainbow. Yes, exactly right. And that's how Ezekiel ends as well. There's a big rainbow around it. Uh, the firmament concept of this vision is also where flat earthers get their idea. Yeah, I'm going to leave that alone, but yes. Uh, McCool, this would be a Christophany in the Tanakh. Yes. Yep. I think so. I don't know about anybody else, but I definitely think it is. Fancy words for uh, Jesus appearing before he was born. Okay. And Tanakh meaning the Hebrew scripture, the Old Testament. Amen. <laughs> Um, and thinking of the fiery man above, if this was bright and amazing, Ezekiel sees, no wonder no man can see the Father. Another good, interesting point. No man has seen God at any time. Only, right, the Son is the uh, image of the invisible God. Cloud Rider, yep. <clears throat> um Enoch was, and then God took him. I wonder if he went like Ezekiel or like uh, Elijah, maybe you mean? When a believer dies, doesn't don't doesn't angels come for you? Ah, oh, doesn't really say that. It says in the return of Jesus, at the return, we're gathered by the angels. The reapers are the angels who reap the harvest of the believers and gather them to Christ. Um, I don't, unless I'm really spacing out here, uh, when you die, you just like you instantly it says the spirit returns to the God who gave it. Um, absent body present with the Lord. Uh, yeah. Maybe these orbs people see are mini vehicles. Maybe. And there's the thing, guys. Like, it's not just once you start actually looking, you know, treating the subject seriously, like it's not all made up or crazy people. Uh, you're going to see a lot of videos. You're going to see a lot of stuff. Um, yes, there are vehicles that look more like you would imagine a vehicle would be. Um, but then you see things that are not. Uh, and maybe they're the same things and maybe they ain't, but they still could be from the same place. You know what I mean? Uh, Nick on Facebook. Oh, Brian. Hey, if I write in time church on signal Apple, Oh, we don't actually have a group for in time church on signal, Brian. We use it. Some of us use it. We get together, you know, groups and whatnot um, as a te leadership team and things. So we're individually on it. But I mean, honestly, like we don't, we already have an app for End Time Church app. We don't want to have duplications and use other people's stuff. The whole point of the End Time Church app is to not use other people's stuff, right? Because they don't care about the church. They don't care about Christians. We do. You're an incredible sermon. Sorry, Michael. Thank you, brother. It's okay, Kim. You don't have to know what you think about this. It's it's a lot. It's heavy. How fun is it that we'll have ETC the night of the eclipse? Everyone should be done flipping out by then. Hopefully. All I know is, and yes, I'm sorry, unless someone's got a word from the Lord about this. But at some point before Monday, I'm going to get on TikTok or TikTok and all these little videos formats and be a little provocateur again i'm going to guarantee that the rapture won't happen on monday oh man i think i should do that i think i have to because it won't jesus is not returning monday for sure <sighs> oh okay eric von denken denken I didn't know how to pronounce his name there. Chariots of the Gods. I, I know the name of the book. Okay. Right. That's obviously secular. It's not Christian. 
Um, the sound that they make. I wonder if that is how God won wars against the enemy that didn't make human sense. Well, boy. I just watched last night, and this might have nothing to do with nothing, but think about it. Um, 60 Minutes did a expose. They've been covering this story for literally years about what's called Havana Syndrome. Long story short, it's a the evidence is pointing to a, a weapon that the Russians apparently are employing against American citizens, you know, in the intelligence, military political side of stuff who are after them um it's a weapon that uses this intense sound or um magnetic electromagnetic radio wave something literally this kind of crazy sound that disrupts your brain and it goes into your head and you there you get knocked out you get incapacitated people have been blinded um you can you some people haven't recovered from it Anyway, that reminds me of that. So, yeah, it could be, Kim, even just that noise. Okay, like the inside of the whatever this is, maybe reread it with the idea he's also seeing it from the inside. Maybe it affects your picture of what's being described. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. You know, I like that. Yes, you have to. Yeah, I do have to. Okay, I got to go make a video now. Bond servant. <clears throat> For the record, I'm I am not flipping out about the clips. Good. I know you wouldn't. You're not you're not going to participate in that, I know. But other people in your life might and around you certainly on social channels are going to tell you all about it. So we got to be uh the sane ones in the room. Uh, there's Elijah that prayed his servant sees God's army, right? That happened also. There were chariots and horses there as well. Exactly. Elisha, right now, Elijah. Yeah. 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 Right. And he should, he, he asked God to show his servant that there's more with us than with them. And he saw what chariots and horses and stuff that were right there, but they couldn't be seen. <sighs> okay. We've been on long enough. Thanks for your patience in this. We finally got through Ezekiel chapter one and boy, it's full of stuff and it's a doozy and it's supposed to be like i said at the beginning uh god doesn't do things for no reason he's not wasting paper he's not trying to confuse us he's not trying to scare us <clears throat> he's trying to give us information that we need especially in the end times we need this information now you know everyone is familiar more with the end of the book end of ezekiel i mean about how that applies to the end times. Right? Oh, you got the Gog and Magog and the Antichrist and the, the Millennial Temple. That's true. You got all that at the end. Um, but even right from the start, I think, um, the Lord's trying to teach us something about what we may need to know. Okay, so yes, as we said at the beginning, we are brought to you by your tithes and offerings. Please, if this has been a blessing to you, become a regular, sustaining supporter of this online-only ministry. Uh, yes, we have costs. Yes, we have things we pay for every month, including the app, the End Time Church app, which Dr. Anderson told you about earlier. It is our biggest expense of the year, and that is coming up in May. But um, anyway, so pray about it and do it, okay? Let us work together as a team here and as a church. If you have no church home, please become a member. I'd be happy to be your pastor here and uh, help you become a better disciple of Jesus. That's the goal. And no, no homework. Unless you want some. I don't, no, no. I'm good. You, you're you okay for now. Maybe next week. <sighs> Things are going to get supernatural. They're going to get, what, what, what would you call it? Preternatural or something, right? Like more than what we perceive as natural, at least. There's more to the world. There's more to the universe than we're used to. That much is true for sure. And uh, we may just be seeing a lot more of it. All right. Love you all so much, guys. Until next time for Taryn, Dr. Anderson, and everyone else here at the Time Church. It's Pastor Manti. Love you much.